Hi, here we are, and thank you for joining us on this 23rd day of June for the Daily Post, the scriptures and thoughts and ideas that we bring you today. We begin with the scripture, and uh, today it comes from Psalm 103 and verse 11. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. If you're reading the Bible in a year today, we move on through Esther chapters 9 and 10 and Acts chapter 7 verses 1 to 21. The thoughts of the day. Only as man brings his life into harmony with God, does that life have balance and meaning. Then man finds that he is not simply a mass of evolving dirt coming from nowhere and going nowhere. He who angers you controls you. Moral indignation is jealousy with a halo. <laughs> Motivational thought for the day. If you can dream through with wisdom and prayer, you can do it. On this day. In 1757, on this day, British troops commanded by Robert Clive win the Battle of Plassé in Bengal, laying the foundation for the British Empire in India. In 1868, the world's first practical typewriter was patented by Christopher Scholes in Milwaukee in the USA with keys laid out in alphabetical order. In 1985, an Air, Indio, an Air India jumbo jet exploded off the coast of Ireland due to a terrorist bomb. All 330 people on board were killed. In 1991, underwater volcano Mount Didicus erupted in the Philippines. And in 2014, Claude Monet's Water Lilies painting was sold at auction for 54 million United States dollars. In 2016, the United Kingdom voted to leave the European Union. Brexit was completed on this day in 2016. They're still cleaning up, I think. Personal story of the day. A wall of safety. The construction of the Great Wall of China began in the 3rd century BC. It is often called the eighth wonder of the world and it's approximately 1,500 miles or 2,400 kilometres long. The Great Wall was built to protect the people against raids by nomadic peoples and invasions by rival states. In Zechariah chapter 2, we read about another wall of protection. Zechariah had a vision of of a man with a measuring line who was trying to determine the length and width of Jerusalem, as we read in verses 1 and 2. His intention was apparently to begin rebuilding the fortified walls surrounding the city. The man was told that this would not be necessary because the number of God's people would be so great that Jerusalem's walls would not be capable of holding them. See verse 4. Besides, they would not need walls, for the Lord promised in verse 5, I will be a wall of fire all around her, and I will be the glory in her midst. Physical walls can be scaled or broken through, no matter how high or strong they are. But as God's children, we have the best wall of protection anyone can have, God's personal presence. Nothing can pass through to us with first passing through him and his will. In him we are secure and safe. Praise the Lord. The devotional thoughts of the day. The first, give attention to good doctrine. 
the scripture from Timothy 4 verse 11, with references from Deuteronomy 6 verses 1 to 25. These things command and teach. Spending time together in God's word is a challenge for most families today. It is good to learn, then, that God's plan doesn't limit the family's spiritual life to a single method. Instead, it prescribes a holistic approach to training children in spiritual matters. God does indeed command Christian parents to pass on the truths of the faith to their children, but the strategy he prescribes is a flexible one. Parents are called to explain spiritual truth to their children in the context of ordinary life. Instead of demanding that family devotions be observed at a specific time, this subject is to be the focus of family discussion throughout the day. Biblical principles should be so naturally woven into the fabric of our daily lives that it seems as if they were written on the door frames of our houses and inscribed on our gates, as suggested in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 9. Today's verse also suggests that parents should expect their children to ask questions about the significance of the faithful traditions that God's people observe. See verse 6, verse 20 of chapter 6 of Deuteronomy. This is a valuable reminder that when our children question our beliefs and practices, they aren't necessarily showing disrespect. Often, their questions reflect a deeper quest for meaning and we should be ready for these teachable moments. When was the last time you discussed God's Word together as a family? If you have a plan for family time, try not to limit your spiritual conversations to just these formal occasions. If your approach to your family's spiritual life is more informal, be careful not to let the subject of God's truth become pushed aside by the rush of the day. Amen to that. The second thought, be not ashamed, in the scripture from 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 16. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. If we live a true Christian life, cleansing and freeing ourselves from sin, keeping the commandments of Christ, then we will no doubt suffer ridicule. Many of us will suffer exclusion. We will be looked down upon as strange people or problem people. We won't fit in with the social crowd. They will make us feel uncomfortable around them with their gossipy worldliness. But we should never let this upset us. We do not need to compromise our position in Christ by settling for doing what the crowd proposes when it doesn't fit with our values as a Christian. Seek to be different, to uphold the word, always. Let people see through your everyday life that you mean business with the Lord and you will not compromise yourself just to keep a friend or to be one of the in crowd. You will draw people to you by standing your ground and not being ashamed of letting people know that you are a dedicated individual. Praise the Lord. Very important words and thoughts in today's uh, misguided world. The facts of the day. A fetus develops fingerprints at 18 weeks. Fingernails grow four times faster than toenails. And the closing thought for the day. Lord, open my eyes to something I lack. Close my eyes to something I fear. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. We hope that the uh, scriptures and thoughts and ideas will be helpful and uplifting as you go through this day. And we hope you'll join us again tomorrow. In the meantime, may the Lord bless your day. Bye for now.